This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This is the second lecture on investment appraisal. In the first lecture, I showed you how to calculate the net present value, and if it's positive, we accept the project. If it's negative, we reject. In this lecture, we're going to look at something called the internal rate of return. And what it is, I introduced at the end of the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we thought the cost of money was 10%. We discounted, we got a positive net present value, and so we would accept the project. But I did say, if it turns out we've got the uh, cost of money wrong, and it's really higher than 10%, Maybe it turns out to be 11 or 12 or 13 or 14. The more expensive, the more the rate of interest, the lower the net present value will be. Provided it's still positive, we're still right to have done the machine. But if ever it got lower and became negative, then we shouldn't have accepted it. Well, it's very useful to know what we call a break-even. I mean, I've explained break-even in other contexts earlier. The internal rate of return, it's actually, as you'll see, a bit of a bad name. It's not really a rate of return at all. What it is, is that rate of interest at which the net present value is zero. Now that's the only definition of it. The rate of interest at which the net present value is zero. And I'm going to do example two, but it's using the figures from example one. So back to example one again. We think the interest is 10%, we got a net present value of 6660. To get a net present value of zero, for the project to be less worthwhile, the rate of interest will be higher. And effectively, we make a guess. Now, example two has said, calculated at 15%, guess at 15. So let's redo it at 15% and see if we're lucky. We want an NPV of zero. And so again, what were the flows? There was an outflow of 80,000 at time zero, same project. An inflow of 20, was it 20? I've lost the project. Yes, 20. In one year, in two years, 30. In three years, ah, I have lost the project. Yes, in three years, 40. In four years, 10. But then remember, in four years, another 10, the scrap proceeds. And so let's see what the MPV is at 15% and see if we get zero. So discount as normal. 80,000 now is 80,000. The discount factors at 15% for one year 0.87, two years 0.756, three years 0.658, Four years, 0.572, giving present values of 17,400, 22,680, 26, 3, 20, 5, 7, 20, 5, 7, 20. And so what's the MPV? The inflow is 17,400 plus 22, 680, 26, 3, 20, 5, 7, 20, 5, 7, 20, uh, less the 80,000. I get 2160 negative. Now, as we expected, it is lower. 
higher cost of money, less worthwhile the project, but I wanted an MPV of zero. Well, 15 is too high. It's going to be lower. Now, we could carry on guessing. You could carry on and say, well, let's try 13%. Keep trying. However, we never, ever do. Having got two MPVs, we estimate the internal rate of return. Now, watch me very carefully here. A lot of books quote a formula, and then I'm not going to because you don't get given the formula in the exam. Formula is fine, but it's, you know, I don't know about you, but with me, it's the middle of an exam, I can't forget it. But more importantly, if you watch me carefully and you understand it, once you've got it, then there's not really anything to learn, there's nothing to remember. So watch me very carefully. We calculated the net present value at 10%, and at 10% we got plus 6660. We then guessed a second interest rate, 15%, and we got minus 2160. Remember, we want an NPV of zero. It's between the two. The interest is somewhere between 10 and 15. And what we do is we say, well, between 10 and 15 is a change of five percentages. And what happened to the MPV? It fell from plus 6 to minus 2. So in total it fell by 8,820. Plus 6,000 to minus 2,000. It fell by, in total, 8... Oh, no, it didn't. 6,660 plus 2,1,6,0. Yes, it did, sorry, 8820. And then what we do is this. The internal rate of return of the IRR, we knew it was more than 10%. Question is, how much more? At 10%, it was plus 6660. So to get to zero, I need it to fall by 6660, but I know that a fall of 8820 is five percentages. We apportion. If 8000, I'll talk in thousands for a minute. If 8000 is five percentages, then we say, oh well, 4000 is half of it, two and a half percentages. If 8000 is five percentages, 6000 is six eighths of five percentages. I want a fall of 6660. We know 8820 is 5%, so we take that proportion of 5%. And there we are. 6620 divided by 6660 divided by 8820 times 5 is 3.78%, 13.78%. There is the internal rate of return. And what's the relevance of that? Well, although you won't be asked to draw a graph, let me draw a little graph. Suppose you did a little graph of the NPV at different rates of interest. There's zero NPV, here's where it's plus, there we go, it's minus. We've done it at 10% and got plus 6660. We then did it at 15%. And we got 13 point, uh, sorry, at 
we got minus 8820. Now, if you uh, have tried lots of different percents, I'm not suggesting you do, but by all means, you know, try 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, and so on. What you'll find is that the higher percent, the lower the NPV. Although it's actually, it turns out it's a curve. It would look something like this. Now, you have to take my word for it. If you don't believe me, again, do try lots of rates of interest and put them on a graph. We found out where the MPV is zero, the internal rate of return. And we've said, what was it, 13.78? And what does it mean? Remember from what I said at the end of the uh, last lecture in the beginning of this one, we think the interest rate is 10% and the MPV is positive, we accept. But we could be wrong. The interest rate may be 11%, it may be 12 and so on. Well, we know that provided that the cost of money is less than 13.78%, then we should accept. Anywhere up here, it will be positive, we'd accept. But if ever it was more than 13.78, we should reject. Because the MPV will be negative, we would reject. Now, of course, we don't know, but it gives us what you might call a margin for error. I think it's 10%, but how much wrong can we be? If the internal rate of return was 10.5%, I'd be very scared of doing it. Here, it's nearly 14%. There's a risk, but, you know, I'm probably not going to be that far out. But that's the real reason it's important. But provided the internal rate of return is more than the cost of money, the project is worth doing. Uh, two small points before I leave this. Uh, first of all, because it's a curve, Strictly, any answer we get is only approximate because we've just effectively oh, assumed it's linear. So it's only approximate, but we only ever do two guesses. We're not worried about it being slightly approximate. It does mean if you make different guesses, you know, if you'd use 10% and 20%, and the answer would be slightly different. To cover that, the exam will tell you what rate, as I've done there, it said do it at 15. So we can check you know, whether you got it right or wrong. Um, however, there we are. It takes a bit of practice. Like I say, if you've got a book and it's got a formula, use it if you want. It just, I don't know, if you take the trouble to think through what I've just done and the logic, uh, it's pointless me repeating it because you can rewind the lecture, but if you think through what I've done, once you understand what I've done, um, then there's not really anything to have to learn. Anyway, we have one last technique for investment appraisal, which is, I don't know, probably the easiest of the three, but that will be the final for next lecture.